One of the most vital pieces of equipment I use is a lab bench power supply. However, with bigger projects coming along requiring more and more power, such as my induction heater which I showed you how to build in a previous video, my humble little lab power supply just has no hope of supplying the kind of power that projects like this can consume. Which is why in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this behemoth of a power supply, capable of putting out 41 to 58 volts DC at a whopping 0 to 60 amps of current. We're talking over 3 kilowatts of power output. That's more than the average wall outlet can output here in New Zealand. So let's get into the video and show you how I built it. This video is proudly sponsored by JLC PCB, who offer high quality PCBs at very affordable prices. They offer fast production time as quick as 24 hours from ordering to your order being shipped worldwide, and ordering is as simple as uploading your Gerber file and choosing your design preferences. Order 5 PCBs from as little as $2. If you'd like to know more about the components I'm using in this build, check out the video's description to find links to the products I'm using. The PSU I'm using is a modified Huawei cell tower PSU. I've already done a separate video on this power supply, so if you haven't seen it and would like to know more, then click the link in the top right corner. To connect or disconnect the load from the power supply, I could use a mechanical switch or relay. However, instead I recommend using a solid state relay. This is because unlike a mechanical switch or relay, there are no moving contacts that could weld together from high current. Naturally we're going to be needing an enclosure. I opted to make my own enclosure from scratch. If you watched my separate Huawei PSU video, you'd have seen me build this enclosure already. When it comes to mounting this power supply, You'll have to get creative since this power supply is designed to be slotted into a server rack. This power supply is densely packed with components. I had to methodically place fasteners where there was enough free space inside the power supply so the fasteners wouldn't touch any components or connections. I made up some L brackets from 3 by 20 mm alloy bar. The L brackets were fixed to the power supply cover using pop rivets. I'm using 8 gauge cable for all the high current DC connections. For the 8 gauge cable I highly recommend using crimp style lugs to ensure a good electrical connection. For 
For the power input socket, I've opted to use a C14 socket, which you might think is odd since a C14 socket and fuse is only rated for 10 amps, while the PSU can consume almost 15 amps. While this might prove to be an annoying bottleneck in the future, most wall outlets in New Zealand are only rated for 10 amps anyway. If I need the extra power in the future, I can always upgrade the C14 to a C20 socket. I realise the wiring might be hard to follow on the video, so I have made a wiring diagram which you can find in the video's description. The PSU controller has two LEDs that I'll be removing and replacing with panel mounted LEDs. And if you're using a metal enclosure like I am, don't forget to add a grounding wire to the chassis. Located on the back of the binding posts, I connected a flyback diode to protect the power supply when powering inductive loads. And 
don't forget there are purchasing links down in the video's description for the components and hardware I used during this build. Uh, if you make any purchases using those links, it gives me a small kickback at no cost to you and helps keep uh, content like this video free for everyone to enjoy. So now I've got this monster of a power supply, which is easily capable of running things like my induction heater here. In fact, this can only consume around about half what this power supply can output. It got me thinking, should I build a bigger one? Well, I'm glad you thought so too, because here's one I made earlier. This is a monster of an induction heater, or at least it is for the average home gamer like myself. I mean, just look at it compared to my previous model. Bit of a size difference. Now, I haven't published the video for this induction heater just yet. I'm still trialing it, making sure it's robust and working everything out really. So if you want to see that video, hit that subscribe button to be notified when it comes out. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, please smash that like button. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.